Hello everybody. Today I'm going to give you six super easy tips that will help you become not only a great English speaker, but you'll be able to sound like an elite English speaker. That's better than native. I'm going to do you one better than native. I'm going to turn you into an elite speaker where even natives will be impressed by the way you speak. So stay tuned. Before we begin, please hit that subscribe button and also give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> Is that dramatic enough? Please give it a thumbs up. Thanks. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this podcast. We're going to talk about how to speak English like an elite speaker. Elite. Better than native. Elite. All right. Let's start by talking about this idea of learning a new language and what the focus is. You know, a lot of people focus heavily on vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. And these are, of course, essential elements of effective communication. Yes, you should focus on these three things when you just start learning English, but not after a year, after two years, after three years, that should not be your focus. What a lot of language learners often overlook is the powerful role of nonverbal, nonverbal communication in enhancing and supporting your spoken English. I want you to understand that nonverbal cues can help you communicate more effectively and confidently, even if you're still mastering the language. So today, I want to talk about how nonverbal communication can become your secret ally in improving your English speaking skills. Before we continue, everybody, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much. All right, the first thing is body language. How you're able to say more without words. Well, that's through body language. It's one of the most important forms of nonverbal communication. How you position your body your posture, and your gestures. They all contribute to the message you're sending when you speak. But even before you say a word, your body can set the tone for the conversation. So let me give you an example. When you're in a conversation and you're standing or sitting upright, well, that shows that you're engaged and you're confident. Now, on the other hand, if you're slouching, that might give off the impression that you're uninterested or uncomfortable, even if you're not. So gestures such as nodding your head to show agreement or using your hands to emphasize key points can really reinforce your message. And even if you don't have the perfect word for, for something, appropriate gestures can help your listener understand your intent. And now I'm going to give you a practical tip. This is what you can do. Practice speaking in front of a mirror or record yourself. I really like the idea of recording yourself because you can watch it over and over. Pay attention to your posture and the gestures you use. Are they open and inviting? Do they reinforce your message? Try it. Record yourself. Nobody has to see it. You might be camera shy at first, but just do it. You'll see. You'll see. All right, the second thing is eye contact. Let's call it the silent conversation because eye contact is a vital part of effective communication and it often speaks louder than words. Yes, true. In English speaking cultures, maintaining appropriate eye contact is seen as a sign of confidence, trustworthiness, and engagement. So when you maintain eye contact with the person you're speaking to, it shows that you're focused on them and that you care about what you have to say. It also makes it easier for them to understand you as they can see your facial expressions and interpret your message more clearly. Now, on the other hand, avoiding eye contact can give the impression that you're nervous or unprepared, even uninterested. This is something you definitely don't want to do. Americans really don't like when the person talking to them is unable to make eye contact. We think that person is, we call it sketchy, like suspicious, untrustworthy. Maybe they don't know what they're talking about. They're unsure of themselves. 
that's not a good thing. This can undermine your message, even if you're speaking with correct grammar and vocabulary. So here's a practical tip for you. This is what I want you to do. When practicing English, focus on maintaining steady eye contact with your conversation partner. But don't stare too intensely, right? You don't want to seem like a weirdo where you lock eyes and you never look away. You don't even blink. That's too intense. That can come off as aggressive. You don't want that. But you want to make sure to engage with your gaze, especially when, excuse me, engage with your gaze as well as with their gaze when they're speaking and you're listening. It goes both ways. Uh, I will say that when you're watching movies or TV shows, I feel like sometimes it's the eye contact is overdone just because it's a show or a movie and for dramatic emphasis people lock eyes for longer sometimes than they do in real life so just pay attention to that um, so watch some movies watch some tv shows see how other people do it and then practice doing it yourself and you might even try uh, talking to yourself in front of a mirror or again in front of a camera and you'll see when you break eye contact, how awkward it can seem. To you, it might seem like, oh, it was just one second, but, and this is where recording yourself on video really is very helpful, you'll see when you just look away for one second, it makes all the difference. You'll know what I'm talking about when you practice this, so go and try it. Okay, the third thing, facial expressions, sort of the universal language, right? Because well, well, I'll get into it in just a second, but one of the most powerful tools in nonverbal communication is facial expressions. They transcend language barriers and can express a wide range of emotions, be it happiness, sadness, frustration, excitement, and it does so instantly. You can think about how no matter what culture you're from, you can sort of know based on someone's facial expressions, any of those things we just mentioned, happiness, sadness, frustration, excitement. For English learners, facial expressions can bridge the gap when words fail you. A smile can make you seem more approachable while a frown can indicate confusion or displeasure. In conversations, your facial expressions can signal how you feel about the topic. Uh, even if your vocabulary isn't extensive enough to describe it fully. So for example, if you're explaining something and your listener looks confused, raising your eyebrows or slightly tilting your head can show that you're acknowledging their confusion and willing to clarify. So here's a practical tip for you. This is what I want you to do. Practice conveying different emotions using facial expressions alone. Try pairing these expressions with simple English sentences in your practice conversations to see how they enhance your communication. So take a sentence, read a sentence, uh, any sentence. Maybe you can watch a movie or a TV show, pause, pause after an actor says something, say that same sentence and, you know, put on that facial expression that is appropriate for what you're trying to say. That's one way of practicing. Record yourself. Again, recording yourself on video is really helpful. All right, the fourth thing, the next thing is your tone of voice. You're bringing your words to life uh, with your tone of voice. Uh, your tone of voice is the pitch, the volume, and intonation. They play a critical role in how your words are received. In English, tone of voice often conveys meaning beyond the words themselves. So for example, if I say, I'm fine, in a neutral, calm tone like that, it can mean exactly that. I'm fine. That's it. Neutral. But saying it in a frustrated, sarcastic tone can indicate the opposite. So if I were to say, if you were to ask me, how are you doing? And I, say, and I were to say, I'm fine. The way I just said that, I'm fine. That doesn't sound like I'm fine. And that's how Americans use tone to really communicate how they're feeling. So if I say, so you ask me, how are you doing? I'm fine. That's pretty neutral. 
you can pretty tr much trust that what I told you is true. But if you ask me, how are you doing it? And I say, I'm fine. That doesn't sound like I'm fine at all. So you get it? English speakers often rely on tone to determine whether someone is being serious, sarcastic, excited, for example. So for language learners like you, developing an awareness of how your tone affects your message is crucial. It's not just about the words you use, but how you use them. If your tone is too quiet, you might seem unsure of yourself. If it's too loud, it could come off as aggressive. So you wanna find the right balance and match your tone to the context, and that'll help you express yourself more naturally in English. All right, so here's your practical tip. This is what I want you to do. Practice speaking with different tones and intonations. Read sentences with varying emotions, such as happiness, anger, or surprise, to see how tone changes the meaning of those words. Like that example I gave you, where I responded, I'm fine. Try doing that. Try doing that with other words, other sentences, other phrases. Say it in different ways, different tones. And if you're not sure what different tones you can say the same thing, again, try watching movies and TV shows. Pay attention to how somebody says just the simplest words like when they respond to how are you today or how was your weekend. Okay, the fifth thing, space and physical proximity. This has to do with understanding cultural norms. So addition, excuse me, in addition to body language, eye contact and tone, uh, physical proximity, which means how close or far you stand from somebody, your distance from someone. It can also impact communication. Now, different cultures have different norms when it comes to personal space. And understanding these norms in English speaking cultures can help you communicate more effectively. In many English speaking countries, people tend to keep a comfortable distance while speaking, particularly with strangers or informal settings. I can tell you that Americans really need and want and expect a comfortable distance because standing too close might make others feel uncomfortable while standing too far away can signal disinterest or disengagement. If you're wondering what that distance is, I would say just stretch out your hand, your arm rather, stretch out your arm right in front of you. And unless you have unnaturally long arms, that's a good distance. What is that, like a, a meter? A little, little over a meter? That's a good distance to stand from someone. So be mindful of personal space, especially in English speaking environments. And this can help you navigate social interactions more smoothly and make your conversations feel more natural so there won't be any awkwardness. All right, here's your practical tip. This is what I want you to do. When engaging in conversations in English, observe how much space native speakers give each other, how much space maybe a native speaker gives you and try to mimic that distance to avoid miscommunication and awkwardness. And again, I've noticed, I've noticed that in movies and TV shows, people tend to stand closer. And again, that is just for dramatic effect. In real life, Americans don't stand that close to each other. Again, I want you to remember that, let's say roughly one meter distance that you should stand from the person you're talking to. Stretch out your hand, that's the distance. All right, so I've given you five I get, let's I say tips, let's recap. So nonverbal communication is your language support system. Mastering English involves more than just speaking the right words. We always are focusing on the words, the words, the words, and maybe in our head also the grammar, the vocabulary, etc. But it's about expressing yourself fully. Nonverbal communication, which is your body language, eye contact, facial expressions, tone of voice, and this understanding of personal space and distance can dramatically enhance your ability to communicate well in English, especially among natives. Even if you're still learning the language, using these nonverbal cues will effectively help you to build stronger connections, 
understand conversations better and feel more confident in expressing yourself. So the next time you're practicing English, don't just focus on the words. Pay attention to what your body, your face, and your tone are saying, because these are just as important as your spoken English. All right. Thank you for listening, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. And since you're still here, I'm guessing you enjoyed it. So please give it a thumbs up. Would really appreciate it. And also, please subscribe and click the bell and select all or always. That way you'll always know when we upload future videos. Thanks so much. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.